Hello, my third grade friends. This is Miss Chicatelli here, and uh, welcome to your first day of online teaching. Um, today, we're going to study the artist Renee Magritte, and then we're going to create an artwork together. So, let's get started. Renee Magritte was born in Belgium in 1898. That's right, it's a really long time ago. He moved to Paris, which is in France, in 1927. This is where he met Salvador Dali and André Breton and the rest of the Surrealist group. Surrealist is a pretty big word. It comes from the word Surrealism. And to understand what Surrealism is, I have this little video clip to explain that to you. Reality. We all have to live in it. It's made of real things like trees and staplers and washing up. All very useful, but also just a tiny bit boring. Which is why the world needs surrealism. So, what is surrealism? Surrealism is an art movement started by French writer André Breton back in the 1920s. He was interested in things like dreams, fantasies and thoughts in our minds that we don't even know we're having. Artists such as Salvador Dali, René Magritte, Dorothea Tanning and Eileen Agar explored these ideas by creating surrealist art. So what does surrealism look like? There are two main types of surrealist art. The first type is inspired by dreams, like this piece by Spanish artist Salvador Dali. Dali was the big name in Surrealism, known for his wild behaviour and even wilder art. Like dreams, his work often combines things you wouldn't expect to see together, like this piece. But hey, dreams can be frightening. Just look at this nightmarish painting by the American artist Dorothea Tanning. Surreal, huh? The second type of Surrealism is called Automatism, which is art made without thinking. So if you've ever doodled whilst daydreaming, I hate to break it to you, but you're a surrealist. Check out this playful piece of automatism by the Spanish artist Jean Miro. Is this the sort of thing you doodle? How did people react to surrealism? The surrealists were brilliant at promoting their work, Dali especially, who wowed the huge crowds at their London exhibition by showing up in full diving gear but most critics gave the show absolutely rubbish reviews. What has Surrealism influenced today? Nowadays you'll see Surrealism's influence everywhere, from wacky adverts to video games to surreal scenes in comic book films. Anything that tries to break free of plain old reality with a little wildness, weirdness and joy. Now that we have a better understanding of what the word surrealism means and what um, the artists of the surrealism art movement did, let's take a look at some of René Magritte's artwork. Magritte's paintings appear to be very realistic until you look super closely. What about this painting looks real? And what about this painting kind of looks strange? I'd like you to think about that for just a moment. Magritte pays very careful attention to detail and creates an almost photographic quality in his paintings. Basically, they look real. This makes the illusion all so much surprising. Take a look at this one. This guy is um, essentially looking in a mirror. What do you see when you look in a mirror? Do you see the back of your head? Magritte painted in the same style almost all of his life. His paintings are very clear and painted very neatly. If you take a look at this window right here, boys and girls, what do you see? What is strange about it? I want you to keep in mind when you're looking at all of these paintings, what looks real and what looks strange? Because this is the point of Magritte's artwork. Magritte's paintings often put together two ordinary things to create something surreal, like a key that's on fire or this rock that's on fire or an egg. Can those things go up into flames like that? Let's think about it.
we see floating objects in his artwork. And changes of scale. Okay, scale means what the size of one object is compared to another. Keep an eye on this one because we're going to do something similar for our artwork. And we see strange transformations in his artwork. What do you think this painting is about? It's called The Reckless Sleeper. Some of his paintings are quite mysterious. What do you think is happening here? This looks like an ordinary painting, right? Look closely. What about it is strange? If you take notice, the sky is a bright, sunshiny day during the day. And then on the bottom, where the house is and the, and the water, it looks a little bit more like nighttime, doesn't it? So he mixed together two times of day and kind of tricked your eye to believe that it was, it was something normal. Okay, you're going to pause me now and you're going to run and get a piece of paper, a pencil, a ruler or a straight edge, something that has a, um, a straight um, edge to it so that you can use that as a ruler, um, a black sharpie or a marker or a crayon, whatever you have works, colored pencil, anything that you can outline your drawing with. Okay, boys and girls, this is what we're going to be making. We're going to be creating a room that has something that's really large um, that wouldn't be able to be that way if it wasn't for a drawing. So I want you to think of something important to you or maybe not important to you or something that you just see around the house that you would want to put in the middle of this room. Okay, so you're going to start this with your paper horizontally or side to side, not up and down. And you're going to need um, a ruler. So what you're going to do is you're going to measure from the top to the bottom of your paper to see how many inches you have. So, so my paper is nine inches long, so I'm going to put a little dot at four and a half because it's half of nine. Then I'm going to measure across again. This side is 12 inches long, so you're going to put a little dot at the six. So I'm going to raise my four and a half dot, and I'm going to put a little dot at the six. Now, from that dot, I'm going to draw a line from the dot all the way through the corner of the paper. I'm going to do that from all sides of my corner. So I'm going to put my ruler right on the dot, and then I'm going to draw from the dot to the corner all the way through. I'm going to do the same thing from the last. Make sure that your ruler touches the dot and the corner. Okay, now I'm going to put four dots on my paper. So what we're making, boys and girls, is we are making a room. So this is going to be the back wall. We're learning how to do what's called one-point perspective. So you're going to put a dot on each line. Make sure that they line up with each other. It's not crazy important if they are um, completely even, but you want them as even as can be. Now I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to connect those dots. What I'm creating, boys and girls, is the back wall of my room that I'm going to be creating. Okay, okay so I'm going to connect those dots as best I can. And then once you are finished with this, you're going to erase that X in the middle. You're going to leave the dot um, just fairly visible because you're going to use that again later. Okay, so you're going to erase the X, leaving the dot in the middle. And then essentially what you have here is your room. You've got your ceiling, you've got your two side walls, you've got the back of the wall, and now the floor. Okay, so there's a few ways that we could do the floor, and that's what we're going to start with. So I've redrawn this out on a whiteboard for you to kind of get an idea. You're going to take um, your ruler, um, and from the dot and to the actual angle of that bottom line, I'm making a rug here. 
So I'm going to go ahead and create um, lines that are the same as the ones that are right above them. Same angle, connect it to finish. And I can add some fringe on the ends. Um, this is if you'd like to have this option. You don't have to draw this option. I'm just showing you how to do it, okay? Okay, another option you can use um, is something even simpler than that. And you could do um, kind of an oval area rug. You could obviously um, create more details for yourself if you want to draw something on the inside, some kind of design. Um, and your last option would be to just fill in the floor as is. You could just color it in whatever color you'd like. Back to my paper, I've decided that I want to put a checkerboard floor because I want to kind of use what we've learned about um, with optical illusions. So I'm going to put my ruler kind of the same way that I created the first um, lines. I'm going to put my ruler on that dot and I'm going to spin just the bottom of the ruler and I'm going to make a line every time that I move it. Make sure that your ruler is staying on the top of that dot and then it's moving around the bottom. So as you can see, it's kind of starting to look like the floor is going towards the back. last line down okay and now I'm going to go ahead and put horizontal lines you could leave it like this too that looks pretty cool now I'm going to put um, horizontal lines going across to crisscross over kind of the same way that we created our op art and I've got a tile floor Next, I'm going to add some things on the side walls. Okay, so the way you do this is that you make sure your ruler is even with the lines that are going up and down. Just drag it over, put two lines. Now you're going to flip your ruler and you're going to make sure it's on that same angle. See how I'm dragging it down from the ceiling line? You're going to put an angle there, a line there. Same thing from the bottom. So now it's going to go towards the bottom of the page. There's another angle erase anything that um, didn't get connected and I made a, I think I'm gonna make a painting out of that one and now I'm going to do the same thing on this side I'm gonna make this one a little bit longer so line it up with the sides of the paper then flip your ruler same angle as the floor just checking it oh looks like I made a mistake here so we're gonna erase that then you're going to go from the top to the bottom, same, same angle as that line that you have there. So don't move your ruler. You're just going to go from the top to the bottom. Erase any mistakes, of course. Okay, so now I've got the shapes of my window and my painting. Now I'm just going to draw um, a light fixture coming out of the ceiling. And I'm going to add all different types of details into this now, okay? Now, the assignment here is to pick an object that does not belong really large in this room, okay? So I'm going to pick an apple because you wouldn't see an apple huge, almost as big as uh, an entire room. So Rene Magritte would make things that were kind of normal, and then they would, he would put them together to make them look um, strange. So a huge apple in the middle of a room obviously is not a real life thing. So I'm going to create an apple in the middle of my room. Here I'm erasing the side of the floor that goes on the inside of my object or any of the walls. This makes it so that this apple will now stand on top of the floor. So you want to make sure that whatever you draw could be anything from an apple to a Pokemon character. As long as you erase what's um, inside of that, uh, it will look like it's sitting on top of the floor and in front of the wall. From here, you're going to just add different things onto your um, your side thing, your side objects. I'm going to draw a window on this one, and then on the other one, I'm going to make a painting. This is totally up to you. You do not need to 
copy the same thing that I'm doing. You can draw anything you like on these two things. It could be shelves, it could be a bookcase, it could be a window, it could be a painting. It is totally up to you. Maybe something that you have in your room. So I'd like you to go ahead and continue. You can add all the details into your drawing. Okay, so my last step now is going to go and find something that I can outline this with. It could be a regular marker, it could be a crayon, it could be a Sharpie. I luckily enough as a sharp, have a Sharpie. I'm going to outline this entire drawing um, with Sharpie. Please, please, please make sure that you're using your ruler with the, or your straight edge to do the straight lines. You could do anything that you did with a ruler with a piece of cardboard, with a card, with anything that's straight and uh, um, pretty sturdy. You could do another piece of paper, but it's a little bit thin, but it is, it is doable. So you're going to outline this whole entire drawing, and you're going to um, upload your final drawing to your Google Classroom that will be graded, and you're going to hold on to this artwork because we're going to color it in next week. See you guys next week. Have fun.